So how many people are familiar with Prometheus? At all? All right, good. Well, this will be a good overview, uh, which I think is the objective. Uh, and Prometheus, uh, I'll give you an overview of uh, the different components that make up Prometheus. Uh, and then I'll give you a quick example of how to deploy it and how to pull data out of it. Uh, it's a pretty interesting tool. Um, I used to work at a company called Orbitz uh, in the US, uh, their online travel uh, site. I think rates to go is like an Asian version uh, of what they used to do, or at least back in the day they did. I don't know if they're still around. Um, but we created uh, something called Graphite. You might have heard of Graphite, uh, but that was an open source project that came out of Orbitz. Uh, and I was on the team. Um, actually, one of my teammates is the one who actually wrote Graphite. And then my responsibility was getting the metrics out of Graphite and creating graphs and uh, meaningful information. Uh, we also created a whole event processing stream around that as well. Uh, so whenever I dive back into the world of metrics and see how we've kind of progressed, it's always really interesting to me uh, knowing that I have this knowledge or, or background from 11, 12 years ago uh, of what we were trying to do of monitoring our systems. So. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm um, all things open source at Sysdig. Uh, we have a couple open source projects. Um, we also interact with a lot of open source projects and Prometheus is one of them. And we like Prometheus uh, because it gives us a standard way to pull metrics out of uh, applications. Uh, it also gives us a standard way to pull metrics and push it into our cloud-based SaaS monitoring tool. Uh, from all of the components in your Kubernetes cluster as well, because the the Kubernetes world, uh, the cloud native world, is starting to kind of standardize on Prometheus metrics. Um, I used to work at Chef, uh, and so uh, have a background in open source for a while now. I worked at Chef for about five years and did a number of roles for them. Uh, and uh, like Anton, uh, I'm a DevOps Days organizer as well. Uh, I do, uh, organize DevOps Day Ohio. Uh, and then uh, I also helped found DevOps Days in Minneapolis and a few uh, others as well. And if you want to reach out to me, that's my GitHub and Twitter handle, as well as the Twitter handle will be down in the corner. So uh, this is not picking on OpenShift. This is just kind of like the most complete diagram that I had. Uh, but this is a you know your typical uh, Kubernetes cluster and what it looks like. So you have lots of different components. Uh, you're going to have storage, uh, you're going to have the master node where uh, Kubernetes runs, and then you have where your applications actually run uh, on the, uh, the infrastructure nodes. Uh, and then you have a whole service layer and hardware and cloud provider and a whole bunch of other things that you still have to monitor and get full information from. So uh, the other thing is, is these infrastructure nodes are going to scale out, uh, scale up and down depending upon uh, what your workloads are and how many application nodes you need. And then, of course, on every single one of those nodes, you're going to have uh, 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 tens of containers uh, running on them that are actually running your application. So it gets very complicated to figure out how do I start pulling metrics back from all of these things. The other thing that makes it complicated is that uh, these, uh, these environments are dynamic. So machines are coming up and down or containers are spinning up and down. Uh, and so how can you pull back the metrics and information from, uh, from things that are uh, very rapidly churning uh, and going out from underneath you? So uh, the question is, is how do you monitor your core infrastructure services? How do you alert when there's an issue? How do you monitor the applications themselves and not just look at app, uh, infrastructure metrics? While infrastructure metrics are important, the real golden signals that you want to look at in your environment tend to come from your application. Uh, and then how can you give developers access to monitor their applications? Not only how can you give them a way to instrument their code, but how can you give them a way to actually look and see into those uh, particular metrics? So let's talk about what is Prometheus. So it's multiple meanings for uh, a word. Uh, it can be a monitoring stack. It can be a way to instrument your code. It can be a metrics interface that Prometheus has defined. Uh, it can be a query language, uh, which is actually called PromQL, uh, or it could be the actual metric server itself. There's actually several components of the Prometheus stack, uh, and this is uh, what it looks like. So 
you have uh, where we get our metrics from. Uh, so we have pull metrics. Uh, the metrics are typically in the default scenario in the Prometheus world, metrics are pull based, uh, meaning that Prometheus server goes out and scrapes metrics off of an HTTP endpoint. Uh, you can have short-lived jobs that will push metrics uh, and you can push metrics to a push gateway. And then the Prometheus server pulls the metrics again uh, from the push gateway. Uh, it can use uh, the information that's provided through the Kubernetes metadata API to pull back information about what's actually running in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, also doing things like auto discovery. So if you put annotations on your pods, uh, those annotations can be used to actually go and scrape back uh, metrics off of the endpoints that you put in those annotations. Uh, so it's an easy way for Prometheus to auto discover where it needs to start pulling metrics from. Uh, there's an alert manager, which allows you to send alerts and you can use uh, the same language that you use for PromQL to actually write the queries. Uh, you can use that same language to write what uh, you would be alerting on. So you basically run a query and if the values of a particular range, uh, then you would have the alert sent out to those various locations. And then uh, Grafana is kind of the, the default uh, open source um, graphing solution. Uh, it can interface in with a whole bunch of different uh, databases, not only just uh, Prometheus. Uh, and it gives you a common place to do dashboarding and visualization. Uh, give access to dashboards to your developers and other things like that as well. And I'll deploy that uh, quickly uh, here as well. So let's talk about the first component, uh, Prometheus being a way to instrument your code. So um, back in the day, uh, and we still kind of have this problem. Uh, so this is the problem that you know Prometheus is really trying to solve, is that if you wanted to pull Java metrics, then you would have to pull metrics in the JMX format. Uh, if you have custom metrics, then you might be pushing them to something like StatsD, and then you need to pull metrics from StatsD and then store them in a database. Uh, you have things like EXP vars, uh, and then you also have things like vendor APIs. So you might push to a vendor API, or you might have to pull metrics off of a vendor API. A good common one where I pull a lot of metrics from uh, is the Docker Hub repository or registry. Uh, you can query the API and you can find out information about number of pulls. Uh, and so as we're tracking the success of our open source projects, uh, I actually have to scrape back uh, data from that API uh, to figure out how many times people are downloading our software. And the problem is, is that you had, it's a, it's a uh, everyone knows what PETA means, right? Uh, so it's a pain in the ass for everyone. Uh, you have to maintain this huge code base to figure out how you pull metrics back from all these various different locations. Uh, you have different interfaces, especially if you're doing something with vendors uh, as well. Uh, it's not always available for your language. Uh, so you might ha not have an SDK to actually go and implement the thing that you need in your language. Uh, and it doesn't always work in this kind of dynamic microservices world as things are spinning up and down and auto discovery of metrics and things like that uh, tend to be very hard with kind of the traditional way that we've done things. And so there's a whole bunch of different things that people people have done uh, to try and uh, fix this problem. Prometheus metrics is one of them, and uh, Prometheus metrics and open metrics are, um, this slide was written a while ago, but um, per, my understanding is Prometheus metrics and open metrics are essentially merging, and the Prometheus metrics format is becoming kind of the standard open metrics format uh, now. So, um, um, uh, Prometheus, Prometheus metrics or open metrics, metrics has really kind of become, become this de facto standard, standard of how we expose how we metrics. metrics. So, so a lot of the cloud native applications cloud already support, uh, support exposing Prometheus, Prometheus metrics, metrics, as well as the projects or services that you'd be running on top uh, of your uh, Kubernetes uh, platform. So things like Istio, Traffic, Core DNS, FluentD, and so forth. They all expose their own Prometheus metrics. And so once you install Prometheus and you have those services running on the cluster, you're able to start collecting information back around how those application services are performing. Um, the, the nice thing is, is that you can instrument once and uh, you can support many different use cases. Uh, you can also support many different providers as well so that if you have a commercial company that you want to use, most of the commercial vendors will pull back Prometheus metrics, auto-discover Prometheus metrics, uh, something like Datadog or even Sysdig, uh, 
um, you can automatically have those metrics pulled back. So you just need to instrument once and then you can support the Prometheus server or your commercial agent you might use, Grafana, whatever dashboarding the commercial vendor provides and so forth. And so the goal behind this is really kind of trying to get rid of all those custom exporters and scripts and everything that we used to do uh, to massage JSON. And this is uh, an example of massaging JSON. Um, <laughs> we'll skip that. So let's talk about the metrics format and what it looks like. So uh, you have the metric name, uh, and then you have a series of labels. You can have more than one label uh, if you if you wish. Uh, and then you have uh, the value of the metric, uh, and then the timestamp. And there's a format uh, that this all follows. Uh, there's also the data model that they talk about on the Prometheus IO documentation uh, as well. So you can see here we have HTTP request total. Uh, in this case, we're just looking at posts that were uh, successful. And then we are looking at posts where uh, the code is 400. And so the nice thing what this allows us to do with these labels is that we can query these labels later using PromQL to only get the information out that we want or only get the metrics that we want. So if we wanted to uh, track errors, uh, you could do 400 um, uh, star star uh, and then a, a tilde there uh, to match something that uh, matches that regular expression. And I'll show that here in a second. All right, so there's right. the there's metrics the interface metrics as well interface that's as well defined. That's defined. Uh, so the first uh, thing that's important is understanding, understanding how metrics how names metrics work. Names. And a couple things yeah. I'm going to highlight on here because this is really long. Uh, so typically, uh, the, first typically the first thing that you have is the, 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 the prefix. The prefix. Uh, and then uh, uh, beyond the prefix, beyond you then you the have the actual uh, the metric itself. Uh, the other uh, thing is, other is that you're going to have at the end, you're going to have things uh, about what the actual unit is that you're measuring. So you can see here that we have seconds, we have bytes, or we have total. Uh, and total isn't necessarily something that's a unit. So like HTTP requests doesn't necessarily have a unit that you're measuring. Uh, you have requests per second that could be another metric that you define. Um, but uh, a total or accumulating counter would just be a total. Uh, and then you can see uh, here when we com combine them, uh, where this uh, is, where this is uh, the total uh, over number of seconds uh, number of uh, as well. There's uh, a ton of libraries uh, that allow you to instrument your own code. And so you want to instrument your own code around things like how long is it taking your application to do the business logic type things. And that was actually the problem that we were trying to solve at Orbitz was that we had uh, uh, hotel searches that were taking, you know, 60 seconds, and we had some hotel searches that were taking 10 seconds, right? And so we needed to be able to see when those events are happening, when all of a sudden uh, our hotel searches start to fail or our hotel searches start to take a long time, and then we could use that information to determine maybe uh, one of our providers were down or maybe one of our uh, providers were having their own issue, and then we could turn that particular provider off. Uh, the other thing that we were really wanting to look at is um, uh, air search metrics and other things like that. And so we wrote actually a, a custom format for our Java application to expose these metrics and push them into Graphite. And that's uh, an open source project that's probably, uh, the code was released but never touched again, uh, called Irma. Uh, I know it's still out there. I've seen it in a few places. But... Um, um, that was only that for was Java. Only for so Java. the nice thing is, is what's happened in the world of exposing metrics is that no matter what language, uh, even Bash, uh, you have a library that you can use to easily expose metrics in this Prometheus format. The other thing is um, uh, I would avoid trying to write your own metrics exporter uh, for your language. And I would uh, really encourage you to use one of these that's provided. Uh, you need to be careful about when you're collecting metrics is that you don't want to block your application. And so a lot of these libraries actually take into account uh, need, needed to have multiple processes, one serving metrics collection and one serving the actual application code itself. Um, and you also, uh, there's also a lot of uh, libraries in these where you can create the data structures around, uh, around the actual metrics and things like that. It makes it a, a ton easier. Um, so, uh, so there's what's called the metrics, called metrics exporter. Uh, so what you do in your application is you use one of these SDKs to create the exporter. 
Uh, and it, it's uh, all it's metric all are exposed via HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, so this gives you a common standard way to go and scrape metrics. The other nice thing is that you can just open up in your web browser, or you can just do a curl against the metrics endpoint to see if you're getting metrics, see if your metrics are incrementing and other things like that as well. Uh, there are uh, lots of well-known exporters, uh, and there's about 470 different ports allocated uh, for the different exporters. So these exporters are all around things like uh, even low-level things of like uh, from the hardware layer, layer. So if you're running like uh, uh, Dell and what's that called, the DRAC inside of the Dell, you can pull in stats off of the actual hardware components. Uh, you can pull information from Podwatch and other things like that as well. Uh, and then there's uh, lots of different exporters as well. Um, these, uh, this isn't a, this is more of a definitive list uh, of the actual uh, exporters, the ports allocated. Uh, but not uh, like, for example, we've allocated a port for one of our open source projects, but we haven't started exposing metrics yet. Uh, so it kind of gives you the idea of like, there's a lot of people that are wanting to expose metrics in this format uh, and shows you the popularity of it. There's a couple different ways that you can collect metrics as well. Um, so there's some good examples are things like C Advisor and Node Exporter and Kube State Metrics as well, which will pull metrics back from your Kubernetes cluster and then expose them uh, for Prometheus to pull. Uh, we also cover commercial, uh, have a commercial agent, uh, but I'm going to skip that because uh, that's not relevant for us. So let's talk about the query language real quick. So PromQL is a full-featured query language that allows you to analyze metrics in real time. Uh, uh, you can filter uh, metrics filter by metrics labels. By labels. Uh, there's a whole language where you can actually uh, use functions as well. So you can do things like averages, uh, standard deviations, square roots, and other things like that as well. Logarithms uh, as well if you need to smooth things out. Um, you can also do deltas very easily. Uh, so it all depends upon what you're trying to create out of your metrics. So if you're trying to create a gauge or a, uh, if you're just trying to graph a counter, uh, there's different options available to you. It also automatically create histograms for you uh, as well, just by leveraging this query language. And so the data you get back isn't the raw metrics data, but instead you get the histogram with the bucketing already done, and then it makes it easier to expose it to a UI like Grafana or something. Uh, you can also leverage regular expressions. So let me look at this real quick. Uh, so I keep moving this and it's rattling the mic, sorry. Um, so, so HTTP request HTTP total, request uh, total uh, this would just be uh, every single every request. Single request. Uh, it's not uh, scoped it's by, time, by time, uh, and it's also and not it's scoped also not by any by labels. Any labels. Uh, then if we wanted to get uh, more specific, more specific uh, uh, we could uh, then say, then show me the job the API, API server, server and the handler slash API slash comments. So this is kind of showing you how you can use, expose different metrics, especially it's really important inside of your application. You're one, going to want to say the handler, uh, so you can actually trace back into your application where that metric's actually coming from, uh, as well. Uh, you can see how you can use regular expressions as well. So maybe I want uh, uh, everything that starts, or I'm sorry, everything that ends with server. Uh, or for example, I want to not show anything uh, that's a 400 error, uh, and so not anything that matches this expression. Uh, so dot is similar, just like in grep uh, or standard regular expression. So any character, and then star is repeating uh, of that previous character. So in here, uh, since uh, status codes are only three characters, we just put two dots. Uh, and then you can also do things uh, like where you're running functions, or using functions. And so this is going to give us uh, the rate over five minutes, and it's just going to return the data back from 30 minutes ago to one minute ago. Uh, so we're just getting a set of data instead of all of the data. All right, so let's talk about the monitoring stack real quick and what's all composed in this stack. Uh, and then I'm going to do just a quick deployment, and I'll play around with how you set up Grafana and things like that very quickly. So uh, you have the Prometheus server, you have the alert manager, you have the Grafana for UI, and then you have exporters and the push gateway. And I kind of had already talked about this as well. Uh, by the way, there is, if you were in the operator talk earlier, there is a Prometheus operator. Uh, and that operator allows you to set all of this up very easily. 
Uh, I'm going to use a Helm chart today. Uh, if you're not familiar with Helm, uh, it's essentially kind of like app get RPM, but for Kubernetes manifests. Uh, and so, or kind of like Terraform as well, where you can very easily go and just say Helm install the name of the thing you want to install and it'll automatically set up uh, that for you in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and when you have one of these large deployments using something uh, like Helm or uh, other tools, it makes it a lot easier, or even the operator. This is the real idea behind the operator, uh, is that if you want to install Prometheus, it's much easier just to uh, you have one block of JSON instead of all the JSON I'm going to show you or YAML that you need to actually go and set up this entire stack. Um, so there's a different, a couple different ways that you can do this. I kind of already talked about these uh, as well. One thing that I'll point out is that um, you probably need lots of Prometheus servers. And that's kind of one of the limitations of Prometheus is that um, scalability at this level works in a horizontal fashion. And so you have lots of Prometheus servers that are all collecting metrics and storing metrics. The other thing I'll point out is that um, uh, I'm going to work around this in a different way. Sorry. Uh, is that uh, Prometheus doesn't do long-term storage. So uh, if you need long-term storage, or let me, let me put, the, put it this way, um, Prometheus long-term long -term storage is only as good as the durability of the disks that you provide to Prometheus, right? Uh, and so if you have a SAN and you're like, very, we're still doing SANs or something like that, or using EBS volumes and things like that, you can have some guarantee around persistence. Uh, but Prometheus itself gives you no ability uh, to do uh, clustering and other things like that uh, around your metrics. So you need to use something like InfluxDB or Cortex. Uh, and there's some other commercial software that you can use as well to actually go and store those metrics and have a, a durable cluster. And then instead of going and connecting Grafana into um, Prometheus, you connect Grafana into one of these database, time series database tools. Uh, and so let's talk about Grafana real quick. Uh, so Grafana is an open source dashboard uh, and graph editor. Uh, the other cool thing about what Grafana does is there's, there's a whole marketplace uh, around uh, data source plugins uh, or data provider plugins and dashboards as well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different data sources that you can use to query data from as well. And so it's just not Prometheus focused, but it's focused on uh, uh, lots of different databases as well, including simple things just like MySQL. Uh, so just doing MySQL queries and pulling data out of MySQL if you wanted to. All right. So um, there's also, as I already said, there's vendor solutions as well. So there's Grafana Cloud and Weave Cloud. Uh, we have our own backend that we run uh, as well uh, that lets you uh, store these metrics in a common location as well. We also do things like imp implement um, uh, PromQL so that you can actually run queries. And so uh, whether uh, this is more about long-term storage, the other thing that we can do is uh, you can use Grafana with us as well. Uh, if you if you uh, choose to. So that's kind of how we try to interact with the open source community by leveraging a lot of the de facto standards that the open source community has created, as well as our own projects that we do uh, around open source as well. So uh, let me just grab a chair here and we can do a quick demo. Hopefully my demo environment didn't crash as well. All right, so um, if I do a kubectl git, Pods. I shouldn't have anything running here. Running here. Must be getting close to lunch because now the Wi-Fi is not working. All right, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Uh, and so I'm just going to do a history because uh, it's easier because there's a flag I got to set. Um, so if you want to know how to uh, get started with Helm, it's actually really easy. Uh, you just download the Helm binary, and then you run a Helm init. Uh, and that Helm init, what it does is basically installs Helm for you. And so this is actually a new cluster that I had just set up uh, and did all of this this morning. 
Uh, and so if I just run a Helm install, uh, you specify the name, uh, that's the your unique identifier for it, and then you uh, specify the chart. And then just like we learned in the Terraform talk, uh, there's values that you can set to change uh, what actually happens when this gets deployed. So we're changing a variable that's defined in the Prometheus chart, uh, rbac.create, and we're setting that to true. Uh, there's things like image names, image versions. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can change. And I actually downloaded the values.yaml. Uh, and so you can see here, there are things like mounts that you can change, upgrade strategy, uh, uh, if you have a service and you want to expose it via an IP or a particular load balancer, then you can do that uh, as well. All right, so I'll hit install. And then uh, you'll get back information about how to actually get to the things that you want to get to. So I'm going to export this. And we're just going to connect directly to um, uh, Prometheus and not use uh, Grafana real quick. And so now if I go to 127.0.0.900, I can see that Prometheus is up and running. The other really interesting thing here is, is as soon as I deployed it, uh, I started getting metrics back as well. And so if I click execute, then I can actually see uh, the metrics and the value. You can also click on graph and you can actually see that uh, data as well. And so maybe I wanna go back uh, just 15 minutes and you can see that when I did that deployment, it's automatically started pulling metrics back for me uh, as well. So it's really just that easy and just that quick to start pulling metrics back. Uh, and then uh, let's and then install let's Grafana. Grafana. And so once again, once using again, a Helm chart, a Helm chart and, and I'll do a kubectl real quick, quick. kubectl get pods. And this is the value that Helm provides. So you can see all of those different components that Helm created for me uh, that are running Prometheus. Uh, and then you can see that it created uh, the Grafana container or Grafana pod as well. Uh, and so it makes it a lot more simpler to actually go and uh, deploy things to your Kubernetes cluster. So now I need to go and get my secret. And now I'm going to go and export this again. All right, so grab the secret. And now I should be able to go to port 3000. And Grafana is up and running for me. Then I'm logged in. So the first thing you need to do is you need to configure a data source. And so uh, I'm, you can see all of the different options that are available. There are different plugins that you can add in as well. So if there's not an option there in the default out of the box, you can download a plugin and then that plugin allows you to access one of these other data sources. And then I'm just going to add Prometheus and I'm going to have to cheat because uh, it's a long URL. There we go. And all I need to do is save and test. And it tells me that the data source is working. So I should be able to go here now and say create dashboard. And I'm going to create a graph and do edit. And then we should be able to do that node load one. So that interface that I was looking at earlier, uh, remember uh, that, that kind of query interface against the Prometheus server. You're not able to save anything. You're not able to get these dashboards and other things like that as well. Uh, so this gives you a much more fully functional um, um, UI to actually go and create these graphs. You can resize things. You can zoom into any time range as well. You can turn things on and off 
uh, as well. If you only want to look at particular things, you can do that. Um, but the nice thing is, is that Prometheus, um, or I'm sorry, Grafana offers save uh, lots of different dashboards that you can import as well. And so if you go here to import, and let's just go to uh, Grafana. And click on dashboards. dashboards. And you can see all of these different options that are available to you. Um, um, and so and let's take let's this take one here. One here. And, and all you have to do is copy this ID. this ID. And then I paste in the ID and click load. And it's going to give me information about this. And I say import. And now I have uh, the host metrics of like Kubernetes cluster. I can drill down into the dashboards that they provide, uh, looking at things like interrupts, what version of the kernel that I'm running, uh, and so forth. Uh, an overview panel uh, as well. I can drill down into CPU or load uh, and other things like that as well. So there's a whole host of different dashboards available uh, that you can very easily uh, insert into your environment uh, and load them up. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, hopefully you learned something about Kubernetes, and I'm happy to, uh, I'm sorry, about Prometheus. Maybe you learned something about Kubernetes, too. Uh, happy to take questions if anyone has any questions. I'll just say that, like, this is also a good way if you have a bunch of, I know there's a lot of people that are, like, hardware hackers in this community. So if you're having IoT devices and other things like that as well, and you need to expose metrics, uh, this is a very good way to expose metrics from your IoT devices uh, and other things like that as well. And then you could have a collector go and collect those metrics or they can push it back to a push gateway or something like that as well. And then you have Prometheus and Grafana where you can go and easily start to graph those metrics and pull that information back uh, as well. So uh, I'll be around for a little bit uh, if anyone wants to chat, but thank you very much for attending. Thank you.